Praise God, everybody. I call you blessed. Good morning. Welcome to 714 Prayer. Pastor Rick here, and I'm so thankful that you were able to join with me in this time. 714, what's that all about? 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven, and I will heal their, uh, forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. Praise God. It's so good to be able to connect with you in this way. I enjoy it so very much every single day. And so I welcome you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Somebody say amen. Praise God. Well, uh, yesterday I started <clears throat> a uh, series, a little Bible study devotional series called Five Ways to Overcome. I don't know if it'll be five or four or six, but anyway... First thing I gave you was to monitor the secret place. That time alone with God needs to be guarded very well and vigorously because the devil will do everything in his power to steal that moment from you. So stay on guard and monitor the secret place. The thing I want to talk to you about this morning is to live in the book for yourself. Keep your nose in the book, but live in the book for yourself. Don't just get what you get from the word vicariously through someone else. Get your own stuff, if you will. You know, the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 2 to study to show yourself approved, a faith, faithful work person, workman who needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of tr truth. All of us as believers have been given the mandate to study for ourselves. Live in the book for yourself. In Acts chapter 17, especially the 11th verse, it talks about these folks. They were called the Bereans, and it said that these were more noble-minded than those that were in Thessalonica, for they received the word of God with great eagerness. Yeah, but they didn't stop there. It says they received the word of God with great eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. In other words, receiving the word of God with eagerness but then examining the scriptures to see if the things that they were being taught were actually true or not. Come on, somebody. That's what I call living in the book for yourself. Don't just take it for granted because somebody else said so. Get in the book for yourself. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, said, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, so that you may observe to do everything that is written in it. For then, there's another then for you, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. We have to live in the book for ourselves. So I really want to encourage you in that. Number one, guard the intimate alone time with God vigorously. Monitor the secret place. Number two, don't just get the word of God vicariously from, from somebody else. Live in the book yourself, which is really one of the two points of my mantra. Uh, keep your nose in the book and keep your knees bent to heaven. Amen. Well, listen, let me pray with you for a minute. Amen. Father, I give you praise and honor and glory. I thank you for this time that we have had in your presence. I thank you, Lord, that you are always with us and that you never leave us and you never forsake us. Even in our darkest moments, you are there. Even in the midst of the storm, you are there. Praise God. I thank you for your holy word that is it brings life and it brings illumination. It brings inspiration. It brings revelation into our life, Lord God. And we're so grateful for your holy word. Lord, I pray that we can live in the book ourselves and not just get what we get because somebody else said so. But when we do hear what somebody else says, we go examine the scriptures for ourselves to see if in fact it was true. You considered that practice a noble practice. <clears throat> May we do that noble practice, Lord. I speak health and healing. Lord, any of those that are listening to me today that are suffering in their body with any kind of physical ailment, I speak healing in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, and in the name of Jesus, may healing just cover their body like warm molasses, Lord. Just cover like a blanket, and may they be filled with the healing power of the healer, the great physician, the balm of Gilead, the perpetual fountain of health. 
We thank you for that. Those that are struggling with depression, Lord, and and, and discouragement, I pray, Father, that they are lifted up in their spirits and they find joy and they find happiness and they find freedom from the bondage of the darkness of depression, Lord. Oh, we give you honor and glory. We thank you so much for the way you love us. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy and for your faithfulness, Lord God. There's none like you. No, not one anywhere, anywhere, anyhow. You're the greatest. And we're so grateful that we can be called your sons and daughters, Lord. So I thank you this morning. I give you honor and glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, listen, I call you blessed. I pray you have just a tremendous day. I say this every every day, and I'll probably keep saying it every day, but Miss Diane and I love you. We appreciate you. Uh, we are, we pray for you every day. We miss you, and that's just it's just the truth. We love being a part of your lives. I'm just so thankful that you've given us the honor and privilege of being pastor in your life. We'll never take it for granted, and we'll always do our best to walk in it in a manner worthy of God. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> I pray that you have a, an outstanding day, a wonderful day, a supernatural day, and I pray that you'll be salt and that you'll be light. Keep your nose in the book. Keep your knees bent to heaven and stay connected to the body of Christ. Have a terrific day.